Well, uh, for the last, what, uh, couple of weeks, well, through this whole pandemic, really, uh, we've been working indoors. Yes. We've been, uh, you know, social distanced, as they say. But the, the good news is we're getting a lot done on the railroad, both inside and out. Although with the weather turning winter, we're not really working on the outdoor part so much right now. We're concentrating on the indoor, and the big project has been the coaling tower. Oh, that's a project. It's a big project and a big building. And we've been on this for, I don't know, what, six weeks? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And on the show, we've talked about how uh, we made the corrugated steel... Uh, rusty steel uh, roof panels and uh, those look great. I'll put a link in the description to these various videos. Now one of the shows we did was on the road crossing and I had a little bit of trouble uh, gluing this and so one of the things we're going to be looking at this week is a better way to glue loose dirt like I was using here on the road crossing but mostly we're going to be doing ballast. So this is the system I've used for putting down ballast forever. Uh, spritzing the area down with water and then adding dilute white glue and that works really well for indoors but perhaps not outdoors. Well cat litter might work for ballast. Well it's it's really basic. One thing about outdoor ballast is it doesn't have to be glued down. It can just be on the loose and uh, if you have to pick that up, you can pick it up. So we grabbed this. This is just the natural clay kind. Yes, the non-clumping. The non-clumping, which would be a big mess. But as you can see, it looks great. Yeah. And uh, like I say, right now it's out there under some snow. And we're just testing this to see how well it's going to work. But if it turns into a big mess, as I'm sure it will eventually, we'll just vacuum this up with the shop vac. Right. And then redo it. So that should be a really simple way to do really great looking ballast on the outdoor section of the railroad. I think that looks great. Yeah, it looks wonderful. Looks like real live ballast. <laughs> Now, while this uh, works really great outdoors, because if it gets all over the place, you know, who cares? It just spills onto the grass or whatever. When we're working indoors, we've got to have it secured in place. We can't have it just going all over the place. Now, this is the base for the coaling tower. And at the back of the coaling tower is the loading ramp. And that's not an operational track. It's just a, a decorative feature. But uh, there's coal spilled all over the place, and uh, there's the grates here uh, for filling in the uh, for filling up the coaling tower. And so coal would be dumped through these grates. And so I constructed these grates out of uh, styrene plastic. So if there's any interest, maybe we'll do a show on building the grates. Now. Uh, just as with the road crossing, I wanted to start off here using cellular clay. This is this product that I, I like for, for certain things. Sometimes plaster works best. Sometimes uh, patching spackle works really well. Uh, there's all kinds of different things that you might want to use uh, on your model railroad. But if you're doing like soil uh, or, or something like this where you're right up against things and you don't want to make a big mess with plaster, this stuff isn't exactly uh, not messy. <laughs> it's kind of sticky and gooey. But it's, it's still easier to work with if you've got to push it right up against things uh, and, and not get plaster all over the place. And it cleans up easily if you do get it on something that you didn't want to get it on. So again, it's called cellular clay, and you can just buy it on Amazon or whatever. But one of the things I really like about it is that texture. It looks, uh, it does look like dirt. It does look, especially if you're doing like a muddy surface or something like that. But doesn't that look just sort of like compacted dirt? It really does. And then if you come back and add dirt over the top of it, like we're doing with the squirrel dirt, um, then you can really get some... Uh, some nice looking uh, earth especially if you're doing like a roadway or a pathway this is a pathway here over to the door to the building and by kind of compressing that down uh, you can create a very earth-like uh, texture and then come back and sort of wet it a little bit more right here this is a very dry mix but then uh, once I got it kind of pressed down in place and looking the way I wanted 
I could come back and wet the area a little bit more and then smooth that with my finger and even sort of pounce it down uh, exactly as though somebody had been walking on it, something like that. And you can produce something that does look like compacted dirt. And then when you apply real live uh, fine soil over it, like the squirrel dirt that we're using, um, then it really comes off looking nice. I think it makes a really great looking earthen pathway kind of uh, surface. So how long has this product been around? Oh boy, all, all forever. <laughs> I don't know, I used it as a kid. It's actually paper mache. Oh, is it? Yeah, and uh, I used to smear this over balloons to make... Uh, uh, you know structures that way because it would harden over the surface of the balloon and then you could pop the balloon and you had a paper mache ball. There you go. <laughs> you can make your own pinatas or whatever. Now I needed to avoid getting it where the other buildings are going to go so I mapped that out very carefully so I wouldn't get cellular clay underneath those and then also got the ties all properly glued down and that sort of thing. Normally, I would put the ties down and then get the rails and everything put in place. But in this case, I'm thinking, uh, since it's a non-functional track, it's just decorative, uh, the very last thing will be the rails. This way we can get the, the ballast looking exactly the way we want first. And then you built these really great retaining walls for the coal bin. Yes, hence the, ha the hair dryer in the background <laughs> is trying to get the plaster to dry. But I figured we needed something that looked like old cement with old board forms. And you tested this and it looked so good. Uh, you just sculpted it. Yes. Out it of easier that way. <laughs> easier that way. And it's just, it's a, a patching spackle, the vinyl patching spackle. It looks great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Now we also need a bunch of coal. Yes. And you grabbed this coal uh, from the Drango coal bin. I did. <laughs> the lady was looking at you kind of funny as you were scooping up uh, coal out of their bin. but uh, mm -hmm. Black diamonds. Black diamonds. We've put it to some really good use around here. Whenever we need coal, we'll grab a couple of these chunks. The actual coal from a narrow gauge railroad. But it has to be broken up, of course, before we can do anything with it. And the initial break, uh, you came up with the idea of smacking it with a hammer and screwdriver because it doesn't want to break at first. But then once you get it breaking, it starts breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces quite easily if you just kind of smack it with a hammer. But the goal is to get very, very uniform size. Uh, it doesn't look good, uh, especially spilled around a coal bin if it's got large chunks like this. So what I did is I just separated out the large chunks and then mashed those separately until everything was of a uniform size. And then we added this stuff. Yes. You found this. Yes, at a dollar store. <laughs> a Dollar Tree, yeah. And it's a regular product imported by Dollar Tree from China. And boy, doesn't it look already like a coal load. It does. And if you mix that with the uniform uh, ground up coal, this will really extend that and really look great because you've got a mixture of coal and these pebbles from Dollar Tree. And there it is, the final product right there. It looks great. So I painted the bottoms of the coal bins black in case uh, there are any open areas and then sprinkled some of this around in the bottom of the coal bin to see how it's gonna look. Looks great. It does. And uh, I put the grates temporarily in place just to see how it looks underneath the grates and it's perfect. It's great. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and actually this stuff is very easy to glue down uh, using a couple of different techniques. So I started by just smearing white glue all over the area and then went back to this technique of spritzing it down once the coal was in place, spritzing it down with slightly soapy water and then adding heavily dilute white glue with a dropper and that just kind of capillates in between all of the different little rocks and there it is. Well that's really cool. So that's, uh, that's our finished coal grate with the coal bin, a full coal bin underneath it and uh, like you say it looks great. <laughs> Now while this works really well with large crunchy stuff like this coal, this is where I ran into the problem on the road crossing using the light dirt. And we want to use that same squirrel dirt on the walking paths here. 
And when I used that same technique, well, look, it just turned into a mess. Oh dear. And I fought with this and I did adjustments. I ended up doing this about three times before I finally got it looking uh, the way I wanted it to. But back in the 1970s, I used to use a product on my end scale railroad that was a, a product you were supposed to mix with water to turn into glue. And it's this stuff, yellow dextrin. It sounds like something you take for a cough and cold. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, it might work for that, for all we know. Um, it's actually cornstarch. Dextrin? Dextrin, yeah. It's, I don't know, It's they say it's been fermented and baked and a bunch of different things. But fundamentally, it's cornstarch, and they use it as an ingredient in glue, and you're supposed to mix it with water. But back on my N-Scale Railroad, I used to just mix this powder directly with my ballast and then spritz it with water. Well, there you go. Uh, now, it came in just a plastic bag here with a knot tied in the top. Oh, professional. From Phil. <laughs> <laughs> from Phil. No wonder. He filled it good. So I had to refill Phil's bag. Uh, so I just grabbed one of these Ziploc freezer bags. Good uh, idea. A much better way to keep this. Because, man, is it a fine, 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 fine powder. Like I say, it's basically just cornstarch. It's not toxic, but it goes up your nose and it gets in your eyes. And... It gets all over the place. Makes the parakeet hyper. <laughs> Makes the parakeet in the other room all hyper. <laughs> so while I wasn't concerned about it being toxic, I did want to avoid getting it up my nose. And as it happens in the middle of the pandemic, we all have a mask handy. That's right. So I just donned my mask. <laughs> And that kept me from getting the... You can see I've got dextrin all over my glasses, though, but... Uh, but his nose is clean. But my nose is clean. <laughs> now, here are the... I, I decided to do a test to make sure this stuff would work. This is uh, uh, cinders. These are cinders from the uh, roundhouse at Evanston. And we've used that in a bunch of places. Uh, this is the squirrel dirt, which is just squirrel uh, dirt that was dug up by squirrels into mounds and uh, it's very fine powder. This is um, Woodland Scenics ballast, and I wanted to see how it would behave with just a commercially available ballast. And then, of course, we have our coal, our ground up coal, and I wasn't sure it would work at all for either the ballast or the coal, but I just wanted to try it to see how successful it would be at gluing down these larger chunks like this. So I decided to do a test and I grabbed a piece of uh, this soundboard. I'm using this as a, a road base underneath all of the track. And so what better product to use since that is underneath the track in most places. And then uh, the tools that I would need here. So this is a 409 bottle full of lightly soapy water and a couple of large paint brushes. And then here's the material that I'm mixing with the dextrin. So there's the coal the ballast, the squirrel dirt, and the cinders. And then I just kind of sprinkled a little bit of the dextrin on top of each powder, uh, each each uh, material, the, the dirt and the, the cinders and whatnot, and then took the paintbrush and kind of blended that all together uh, to make sure that everything was coated with the yellow dextrin. Now working with the larger chunks, like the Woodland Scenics ballast, uh, that was trickier, but here with the squirrel dirt and the cinders, look at that. It just blends right in. Oh, that's cool. So it just turns into one substance. It sort of lightens up the color, but the color should be restored as soon as I add water to it. But you can see right here with the coal, it's, it's sort of a problem. Uh, getting it to coat the individual pieces of coal. And I was reasonably convinced at this point that this wasn't going to work at all with something as large as the coal chunks but I figured it will work really well for the fine powders like the squirrel dirt and the cinders. It looks like kind of a struggle to get that to coat the coal. Yeah, it's uh, you gotta work it in and work it in, and I never was able to completely cover all the different chunks of coal with the dextrin, but I got it to the point where, for the most part, everything had a fine coating of the yellow dextrin powder on it, so I thought it should work to some extent. So here are my final piles ready for water. There's the coal, there's the, uh, the ballast from Woodland Scenics, 
and then uh, of course the uh, squirrel dirt here and again it just hardly looks any different and the the cinders so those two i think are going to be really successful the other two well we'll know in a minute so let's <laughs> Let's spritz the water. Now, the other problem here is the 409 spritz bottle is completely unacceptable. It produces uh, way too heavy of a spray. I think we need to run over to Walmart and grab a, a proper uh, spray bottle because this one's just, it's sending my stuff all over the place. I need something with a much finer spray. But for purposes of the test, it should work just fine. And you can see that as soon as the water hits the the cinders, they go right back to being as black as they ever were, which was what I hoped we would see. And about an hour later, after everything started to dry, look, it's already uh, adhering it to the roadbed. It seems to be working just fine. So let's give this a day to dry and see just what the heck we've actually got. And check it out. It's really stuck down really well. That's not going anywhere. You can kind of smack it and abuse it and rattle it around. The squirrel dirt and the cinders are really, really well stuck down. Now the Woodland Scenics ballast, not too surprisingly, I am able to break some of the chunks free. And then the coal, same thing, that uh, it's, it's glued down, but it's not glued down really, really well. Looks like we got two for the price of one. Yeah, Mr. Bottles, uh, named Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. So, uh, yeah, Walmart, two for the same price. And they do produce a really fine mist. So on to applying the material. Now, I've already put some of the coal chunks down on the, the road bed there. And I've already glued those in place using the, uh, the, the water and eyedropper <laughs> technique. And now I'm just kind of moving some squirrel dirt and cinders around over the celluclay, which, as you can see, I've painted brown. Uh, so that where it's coming through the dirt, it just looks like the compacted dirt underneath the powdery dirt. Hopefully that will look just fine once it's, it's wet. And there it is wet. Oh dear. <laughs> so the Mr. Bottle worked really well. It didn't cause the stuff to go all over the place. And it just looks really swampy and wet. And now the key is, what is it going to look like once it's dry? And there it is dry. And boy, the coal is down super, super tight, uh, again, because I've used the eyedropper technique there. And then over here, where I've applied cinders and squirrel dirt, uh, the only downside that I can see is it's shiny. Yeah, that, it shouldn't be shiny. <laughs> it shouldn't be shiny. The dextrin uh, dries to sort of a gloss coat. So I'm going to have to come back. I wish I could get Tester's dull coat. What's happened to testers that's like vanished from the market over the last few months? So got to find some other way to put uh, a clear coat over the top of that that flattens it. Find something to substitute for the testers dull coat. Well, it turned out really nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. If we can just find some way to get the sheen off of it, I think it's going to look just great. So far, I'd say the project is really coming along and we'll keep following the project on the channel. And speaking of the channel, if you haven't been over to the channel and if you're not a subscriber, please go over to the channel and subscribe or you can subscribe with the blue button coming in just now. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to be looking at Karen's project, her Christmas room. Oh, boy. And it was a project. And it's neat.